It's Sunday, May 10th, 2015, and you're listening to the Film Project Podcast, episode 78, That's Not a Strawberry. This episode is brought to you by Iron Go Brewing in Spokane, Washington, Kaufman and Associates at KaufmanInc.com, and O'Doherty's Irish Grill. So, oh yeah, 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 2000. I'll, yeah, we'll go down the list of 2015. I don't summer. know what's coming out. Well, we'll talk. I'll, I'll have a list. There we go. There we go. We're recording. What's what's the link to the list? Yeah. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Film Project Podcast. We're a conversational podcast that is an extension of the Spokane Film Project. You can find out all about us at spokanefilmproject.com. And and now, as of the last four episodes, we're coming to you live from YouTube.ca. <laughs> Are we on the Canada's YouTube also? Yeah. We're made possible by Iron Goat, and we don't. Where's the Where's the next beer? Where's the beers? We're We're drinking it. Is it the goat meal stout? Well, we, now now because we've got video, we can't lie and say that we're drinking the goat meal stout right at the outset. We are still drinking what we had before, which yeah. was a farmhouse ale. Farmhouse ale. We will be drinking the goat meal stout. And I should uh, so they're irongoatbrewing.com. We haven't busted out the goat meal stout, but uh, I think there was something. Goat brewing. There was a goat. They, they have no. They <laughs> goat brewing. They have a a drink called the Impaler, and I think you guys corrected me and said that that wasn't one of their drinks. And I remember feeling no. really stupid, and then I looked it up, and that they is. do they do have one called the Impaler. Yeah, I yeah. Don't, I didn't correct you. So yeah, somebody did. I said I I had mentioned it on a previous podcast, and someone said no, that's a competitor's beer. No, the Impaler is there. Okay, well, someone corrected me when I said that. Yeah. Huh. So so I want a retraction right now on the air. Nope, not getting Not going to get it? Nope. We're also made possible by Kaufman and Associates. They make all this beautiful technology, ours to rant about movies and Jim Jarmusch and, uh, yeah. and other fun Marvel movies and Gotham. Ugh. <laughs> Just make an entire episode about Gotham and Jim Jarmusch movies. They, he could probably direct an episode of it. What would you think would happen if that... How, how would you feel about that? I would probably hate it. And uh, yeah, I would yeah. probably hate it. Nice. There's some good energy in this <laughs> room right <laughs> now. Like, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so they're at kaufmaninc.com. Uh, I'm one of your hosts. I'm Sean Springer. This is Tom Deneen. This is Jason McKee. I'm going to do a little pew, 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 pew. <laughs> And we're Juan Mossless again. Uh, he's at a family function. Uh, so we will pour out some some goat meal stout for for our homie. I was going to say we're uh, sans Cuban today. Sans, sans Cuban. Cuban. Yeah. That's my he favorite font. He may show up. He may <laughs> show up. I don't know. He, Cuban he sans. May make a special yeah. guest star appearance. He said he was. He didn't tell us he wasn't going to show up, but he's kind of running quite a bit late. Yeah, he hasn't texted to say he's at the door. So yeah, yeah. He he did like an hour and a half ago oh, yeah he's I just kind of he's just outside. classic one classic one brandon you jerk yeah classic brandon so uh <laughs> so we've all been pretty busy we haven't seen as many films as we've sh- as we should have uh we i did want to touch on our previous netflix roulette i don't believe jason saw it i'm not sure if juan saw it but me and uh tom should at least comment on it for the podcast it was battle for hadithia or, or for Haditha? Haditha, whatever. Hadith, yeah. And it came from Juan's Netflix queue. It is, I think, a 2007 film. Yeah. yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. And it's basically about uh, 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 an incident that happens in an Iraq city that starts with uh, a group of Iraqis. Um, who plant a uh, roadside bomb for the, uh, for for, the to, um, to kill to for kill American Taliban. soldiers? Yeah, for yeah, and they're planting it no, for Al Qaeda the, for Al Qaeda, and basically everything that happens be right before and and immediately after. And I think is it is it based on a true story or it's based on elements probably from true stories, whether it's real or not? Yeah, I mean it. They they kind of. It almost feels like this is a uh, oh Benghazi kind of allegory, or yeah. but 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 Benghazi happened after that, I think, after yeah. the film came. Out. Oh sure, sure. When when did Benghazi? Whatever it may be. 
Yeah. Just a few years ago. Yeah, this 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 was. Um, it kind of seems like it was produced in Canada. This film, <laughs> not I, not not actually produced. Yeah, there, but it's just sort of that. Uh, it's not the American sniper where it's like <laughs> all the Americans are running around. It's like we yeah. gotta kill those Iraqis, eh? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. um, just just saying that it's not a uh, it's not the the golden boy American kind of point of view that you know they're heroes like an American sniper. Yeah. This is something where it's it's trying to be balanced on both set, both ends of you know understanding why these you know characters are you know doing what they're doing um, for those that are planting the bomb, yeah. as well as you know the, just the general civilians that are caught in the crossfire, and uh, it really the the film did a really good job showing both sides of the story, and I don't know, Brandon, did you watch it at all? No, I didn't catch that. Yeah. Sorry. It did a great job showing both sides of the story and never really making anyone the heroes or and, the, the villains. or the villains. Yeah. Uh, it starts. Well, out, there, there are some villains. I mean, the the Al Qaeda right. are treated as um, Al Qaeda are treated as the obviously villain. the people who plant the bomb are the well, the, the, the villains of the story. The but people, that pay the people, people to plant the bomb. Yeah, and it, it's an interesting look, and it's very it's not very pro American, especially what follows the the actual bombing but it's pro-humanist it is pro-humanist because we we see the frailty within the the soldiers themselves so yeah well that's what it's all about jason <laughs> what's that it's kind of like <laughs> what's that? you just you check out are, are you doing yeah. little vfx for uh, episode one there no but this your, isn't too far phone? this isn't too far off i will be uh on set actually doing shots with your, a, with your no, with, not with an iPhone. No, <laughs> yeah, I'm using an app. It's really great. Cost me 99 cents. Yeah. Oh, so, is it the and, one that makes like the car go off? Yeah, and, and it, it's got a Tyrannosaurus Rex that yeah. walks through and just shakes its head yeah. in the same way and then walks off. Well, yeah, you know, it's we should talk about this in a bit, but it is pretty interesting. The idea that you can break. You said you got the Surface Pro three. Yeah, and you're going to be on set using that to to you know help help i guess do shots or like help plan out shots or? no like actually doing shots yeah. i mean uh you know i will try to it's on on a show like this the budget is so tight mm -hmm. that someone like me the vfx supervisor is also one of the artists on it mm -hmm. um and you have to i have to maintain a high shot count out of each artist to be able to do these do these shows in the allotted time involved uh, allowed and so I need to be on set also and last you know last year we didn't really have that option to be able to do shots on set so and we'll see how that works this season but um, I can't say it's gonna be comfortable we're doing <laughs> stuff on a little on a surface but it it at least allows me to do that and what i might try to do is create do stuff where i'm more creating assets than mm -hmm. you know doing the long slow part of a shot right. yeah on set but not actually doing the compositing on set i don't know if that really makes much sense to have how, you know how many yeah. people know exactly what i'm talking about unless they've done some vfx work but yeah my mom had print shop deluxe well <laughs> so yeah. You she can do it. a lot with that. You print out clip art. You make a banner. And then you, you take pictures of it. I prefer mm -hmm. Corel Draw, but that's just me. Yeah. Does I'm anybody a, still have Lotus 1, 2, 3? <laughs> yes. That's the yes. whole thing, right? I'm an MS Paint guy. Moon Patrol? You guys Moon? play Moon Patrol? No. No? That's good. No. This. Is... So back to w Battle of Hadithia. <laughs> this is um, good radio. It was... <laughs> it's like, there's just there's just no energy we don't know, jason so doesn't have his mcdonald's yeah, uh, just... battle for hadithia like production value wise i i don't know what the budget was obviously they had a lot of resources it was it was filmed in jordan uh so basically they have a real good natural environment there's the some explosions or the guy uh yeah michael jordan he's it's filmed inside michael jordan okay yeah good and uh, is actually in his colon. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, well, there, there's a lot of, I would have expected. Yeah. That I wouldn't be surprised if some of the films actually, uh, improvised. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure that's all on Wikipedia. Uh, m more than half the film is not in English because you're, you're reading subtitles mm -hmm. the whole time from the Iraqis perspective. Uh, there was a little bit of 
the acting I think was the worst part. Mm-hmm. And I think it comes from they're probably with a low budget. They're obviously not bringing in a lot of professional actors. So they're probably using the actors they could get within the local area. Uh, they used actual uh, soldiers, uh, retired soldiers mm-hmm. for, for all the American parts. And I think it's good. I think there's, there's great moments where you could tell that they, and it, it has a, a documentary style to yeah. it. It's kind of like, it, it is shot as a documentary. It's, it's style. shot like, ser- yeah, yeah it's kind of a documentary style. Mm-hmm. It's still, it's still dramatic, but you know, there there's, it, it's like a camera's following them mm-hmm. around the whole time. So there's good moments where the Americans are kind of just doing their thing back at base camp where you can tell they just, the director just set them up and said, Hey, go for it. You know, hang out with your buddies, talk about what you guys would talk about. And that stuff's played off well, but when they get into the actual dialogue, uh, it's not as strong. Yeah. Yeah. The, the main guy, I believe it's Matthew Knoll. Uh, I think he's the strongest actor in the cast. Well, yeah. And he's the one that's given the primary american soldier yeah. role yeah yeah God, and that's the, the central command guy was just <laughs> yeah horrible there, there was a lot of that stuff and, and you could also tell there was kind of limited sets like the central command literally could have just been shot in someone's cubicle somewhere yeah, yeah it was like two uh two folding tables yeah a couple of monitors yeah. and a keyboard or two. and and hmm. production values aren't always a make or break because you know a lot of it is how you can i think you could shoot a cubicle and make it look a little better than they did in the film. Mm-hmm. I think probably for what the the resources they had, I think they did the best they could. But the the best part about the film is how they showed both sides of the story. Um, and and it towards the end, it becomes a very anti-American movie mm-hmm. um, based on the extremes that the Americans go to after the the bombings. And it, it's an eye opener because probably a lot of that happens more often than, well, than you hear it's, about. It's a tale of, uh, you know, someone throwing a rock at a bee's nest. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I- intentionally throwing a rock at a bee's nest to stir up their reaction so that they can then manipulate the uh, the tragedy that is caused to yeah. gain more members for Al-Qaeda, more, yeah. more fighters, more insurgents. Yeah. So it's, um, I, I, I thought that it was a very interesting story. I, I agreed that, a good deal of the performances on the American side, at, at, at least. I I thought the the performances by the um uh, uh by the I guess they're Jordanians in this yeah. case um, yeah, the Ira- Iraqi characters yeah the Iraqi characters I I thought they were pretty decent. Now then again, I'm spending a good time looking at the subtitles, yeah. and so yeah um just the guy the there's the 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 couple. The guy and the girl. Yeah, the guy they and the girl. Were, they were really, strong. really good. They were strong actors. The uh, um, the older, uh, the former, uh, um, the older of the two bombers. I the thought Republic, he was. Yeah. yeah, I thought the Repo- Republican guard. Yeah, former Republican guard. I I thought he was he was pretty good. Um, yeah. Just uh, it was really the American performances and yeah. and I think it. some of the script. I I'm sure some of it was improvised mm-hmm. because there was a. A lot of the the Iraqis' dialogue was always very on the nose, and and some of it was, I guess, for lack of a better word, some of it was even a little silly. The dialogue was mm-hmm. a little silly. Um, I just think it always kind of comes back to if you if they had a st- stronger script, mm-hmm. and I th- I think that's where the the film really really fails. It's a good idea, it's well told, but the script's not really strong enough to really to really overcome any production values or acting limitations that they might have Mm -hmm. because i I think with a stronger strip script uh it would have better used the the strong actors um versus uh versus kind of the the film that we got but jason's you're laughing at something what are we laughing at just sending emoticons oh okay good is that (laughs) is that from uh age of extinction yes yeah emoticons i don't know Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. There we go. So I'd give it a, uh, I gave it, I actually would give it a two star, maybe two and a half. It's a hard film to recommend to people because mm-hmm. I, I think, I think a lot of people will, will not get into it based on kind of the, the acting and the script right away. So it'd be a hard, it'd be a hard film to recommend to most of my friends. And I think the friends that I would want to recommend it to, I think, 
they they'd want to watch it because of some of the political issues with it. Mm-hmm. But there's probably better examples of it out there. Hmm. So I don't. How many stars would you give it? I'm I'm gonna give it three. Yeah. Um, just uh, it it didn't blow my mind, but um, it, it was it's always important to kind of get that um that American kind of red blooded check. You know, we're like we're we're not the center of the world. We we are not the uh, we are not the only ones who's actually less. we are. <laughs> you didn't know that? If you look at the globe, America's right in the center with Canada there oh. <laughs> and that other America down below us. Yeah, yeah. But And then, then all we, the other stuff is behind yeah, us. Yeah, then when you get around to it, they're they're over there. Yeah. We're yeah. we're we're not the only ones that are, you know, uh affected by terrorism and in you know, really You know Joseph in, Smith discovered America in the eighteen hundreds. In uh in all seriousness, the majority of terrorism doesn't happen within the United States. Um, yeah. it, it, it's happening abroad. It's happening in Asian countries. It's happening, um, more, more effectively to individuals outside of the United States. Yeah. 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 How about yourself? There's, there's trouble. There's trouble in the middle East. Breaking news, no. breaking news. <laughs> I already gave it my star rating. Oh, okay. yeah. You missed it. But I'm glad everybody's <laughs> paying attention. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's going to always be like this now because of my new job. I'm, I'm always on call and. He's a people. he's a jizz mopper at the. Uh... I like to refer to them as jizz mopper, <laughs> les jizz mopper, les jizz mopper. <laughs> nice. So so the other film that uh, one of us watched was Ex, Ex Machina. Yes, I and just I guess saw no that. spoiler because me and Tom probably see that very soon. But uh, oh, you don't want to know who dies. <laughs> I have I have a theory based on the I'm trailer joking. that uh, it's that it's actually Hawkeye. Uh. From from uh, from the Mash H, the eighteen or uh, from Nash. <laughs> from Mash. yeah yeah yes you are correct yeah yeah so this is a film I was really excited about seeing I think it came out two weeks ago basically not mm-hmm. not 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 two days ago but the Friday before I don't know about here oh I, it might have when did you see it I guess I just saw it at the today at I'm, the first showing yeah, I'm today. pretty sure it had come out the previous week oh, okay. not this weekend yeah. Uh, but I was I was totally happy. This was one of the the big movies I wanted to see. Yeah, this so this is summer. Ex Machina. It's written and directed by Alex Garland, who was the writer of The Beach, Twenty Eight Days Later, and Sunshine. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, it is phenomenal. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. It's a you know sci. I guess you could say sci fi thriller, drama thriller, suspense yeah. kind of. Um, Thriller is probably the best used, you know, what they would call it. But yeah, um, it is. It's great in every way. I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. For one, um, the acting is phenomenal, and just really all around the directing and writing is. It's just a very, very well put together film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, and it it makes you expect certain things, and then delivers uh delivers above it above and beyond yeah in a different way yeah the it's it's a little hard to talk about without without, ruining it um i guess from from what you see from the trailers it's about uh a man who gets brought to this secluded uh i guess you call it lab i guess yeah based on the trailer and they don't really tell you much they get right into the story and they don't preface it with anything so you obviously, if you've seen the trailer, you know a little bit, but you don't know yeah. who, who these people are and how what their relationship is. Right. You do find that out, but um, yeah. So he's he's brought there as a sort of test. Yeah. Um, to test out this artificial intelligence that's in the form of a of a woman. Yeah. This woman. But character. But you can you know that it's a robot. And I Oscar Isaac is the person who's. Who's uh there to test him, so yes. to speak? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The yeah the trailer I mean looks amazing. Uh, it's one of those films where, uh, it it's kind of it seems like it's playing off similar ideas that that come up in other other technology films or AI films. But I liked in the trailer the setting was cool that it's in this this lab kind of in the middle of the woods that's kind of I guess half house half little mm-hmm. uh like. I don't know, like a futuristic cabin type thing. Yeah, well, it's right on the edge of, uh, you know, it's in a very lush part of the forest, 
hidden away, but it's right on the edge of glaciers. Okay. So I don't know. They don't say where it is, but it looks like it's potentially. Well, there's a lot of places that it could be. I'm, it could I'm be Montana, this time, or it could be a, a all those Canada glaciers or... are CG because global warming and all that. Oh, I'm sorry. For those in Florida, um, environmental changes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That have occurred. No, sadly, that's uh, that's true. I mean, I Glacier National Park. I grew up near near there, yeah. mm-hmm. and it used to be you could you could see them. Now you have to use a binocular to see them, and or do a long hike. Right. I mean, it's depressing. You used to see them from town. Well, uh, no, I mean, from one, the farm. Once you went yeah. into the the park, yeah. you they were easily seen, and you could yeah. easily get to some. Mm-hmm. Now it's a it's tough to get to any, and it's tough to be able to see any. Yeah. I mean, they're also killing dolphins too. Yeah. What? Well, but, this is going to become the message episode of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why are they killing dolphins? No, not glaciers. Just the white oh, man. People. White man is killing is the killing white everyone. Man? Yeah. 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 Let's be honest. The white man is the enemy. We're, we're Maybe. we've, we've Maybe. screwed each other over too many times, guys. Yep. Yeah. I've so, screwed you over three times since this podcast started. And I just don't even tonight. Know. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna find out later and you're not gonna know what happened. Yeah. But then I will sixty years down the line tell you it was you me. You put laxatives in my Adelano yeah, burrito. It was, it was it wasn't anything big. It was <laughs> yeah. just You put eye drops in your water. Yeah. Oh. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're, so, you're not gonna sleep well tonight. Is that mm-hmm. really eye drops? I've I've heard that there are chemicals in the eye drops that uh, in your digestive system they cause great amounts of distress. It's on. It's all on Jenny McCarthy's webpage. That's <laughs> all exactly. Huh. No, I'm sorry, Doctor Jenny McCarthy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so what? I mean, what's your score? What kind of? What score would you give it? Out of five? Yeah. Man, I would give it right up there. Yeah. Yeah. Four point seven five or a five. Yeah. Another yeah. fantastic A twenty four release. I, oh yeah. I loved it. Yeah. It's. I, I felt like the film, honestly, I felt like the film was made for me, you know? Yeah. Um, it is a film that uh, that worked for me in every way. Yeah. Hmm. And it, the main uh, actor is, I, I don't know how, how you Dom say it. Hall Dom Gleason. Hall Gleason. Yeah. He's been great in everything I've seen him in. Yeah. And he was in uh, the he was film in your book. About Time. That was my favorite film of 2013. Mm. He mm-hmm. was very good in that. Yeah. I really like that film. He's trying- Brendan Gleason's son. And he wasn't he in? Oh, um, interesting. He wasn't he in uh, some of the later Harry he Potters? Was in, yeah, he was in the last two Harry Potters. He was in Dread. He was in Anna Karenina. Oh yeah. Which I hated. I the the most recent one with uh, Kira Knightley. Did any of you guys see that? No, no. It is. I think the story of Anna Karenina is just not that interesting. But like the, Les Miserables. For me, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I would, I would, kind of, I would agree with that. Yeah, but, but the production value of that film was amazing. The entire film was set almost as if you're watching a play. So there's this weird creative style to it where there'll be a scene that'll open up like it's on a stage, but there'll be a real train going through the stage, and characters will leave, and they'll just kind of. Wa- Instead of like walking off screen, they'll walk down a couple of steps and you'll see them as if they're walking off stage. There'll be characters who who leave and you see them go off to the distance. Another character will look up like, you know, to to see where they're going and they'll see them up in the 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 catwalks of the stage. And it's really interesting. The hmm. way they did that was was very seamless, but the most boring oh. story I've ever seen in my entire life. And that was the director of uh, Hannah. Hannah. That was Joe Wright. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, who's now doing the the Pan, the Peter uh, Pan prequel. Man, I don't know. You know, about I, that. Yeah. I I I did love Hannah. Yeah. But I I was jaded into that because I'm a huge fan of the Chemical Brothers, and so the the fact that the musical score was done by the Chemical Brothers, I I just I, I couldn't get you, enough of it. But looking yeah. back at it, it, it was an oddly paced film. For all the action sequences it had, it had some well, very, it, very slow, drawn it is. out. It's not really a, an action film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of its own thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really like Tana, but is it a film that I think is like great? No. Yeah. I, but I still really liked it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, so so X, X Machina. Highly recommended. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't really can't recommend it enough but i also can't really talk about it much sure. without i mean 
the trailer gives enough away to know mm-hmm. what it's kind of about, but yeah. you don't. There's more to if, it. Yeah. Oh yeah, if you if the trailer gave any more away, then it would ruin the film. Hmm. And you know, we talked about this on the last episode. It's kind of interesting because we always complain about the trailers that seem to give the whole story away. Sometimes I don't think it matters. Like Titanic literally showed a fast forward of the entire movie in its trailer. Mm-hmm. Uh, last episode, we talked about Terminator Genesis, uh, <laughs> and, and that film gives away what we think is a huge major spoiler by having the John Con- Connor character come back in time as a Terminator. Uh, I don't think for a film like Terminator, there's any reason to do that. Everybody who wants to see the Terminator movie is going to go see yeah. that based off there of isn't there the is franchise. no reason i would i would argue that you do a teaser and that's it and you're gonna get uh a lot more people excited about it mm-hmm. yeah i don't know anyone who, who's excited about it I, because they've they've alienated the people that are actually terminator yeah. fans and mm-hmm. i like i'm not interested in seeing it because of the trailer yeah now titanic uh, i don't think that was a misstep yeah. Um, with the way they sold that trailer, because we all know what happens. Yeah, that, it's right. a historical but there, there was no film. plot twist. No. Yeah. You know. No. And we, we all know what happens to the. The plot twist is Titanic. the boat comes back up. Yeah. And they're like, "Come on back aboard! Yeah. Come back aboard! <laughs> Titanic Two: Revenge yeah. Yeah. of the Iceberg." <laughs> the iceberg. Wait, the iceberg was the one that did damage. So why would that be? <laughs> well, revenge. he didn't. Well, because if the Titanic the survives, the Titanic? then the iceberg's mad. What if, yeah, okay. what if we made a slasher film? Didn't survive. What if what if you actually set a slasher film, like a 1980s slasher film, on the Titanic? Like it's it's like some crazy like like Jason Voorhees type killer, but mm-hmm. it's on the Titanic. Wouldn't that be pretty interesting? I think it would just mm-hmm. be a B movie. I mean, it's not like it's gonna yeah. be. Did, would it wait, be interesting? Didn't they do that in a Doctor Who episode? I Doctor Who's know. not a slasher <laughs> film. I don't think. I don't know. No, they, I just like the idea of maybe the killer killed everybody. And the boat's still just floating out there somewhere. Mm. But no, it, but yeah. it's not. You it mean, is. <laughs> it is. We, we see that we found the boat. I, I, I don't I think didn't... it counts as floating if it's resting on the seabed. Yeah. No, no. Well, you know, that's the chemtrails in the air that are, uh, that are affecting your brain. It's true. James yeah. Cameron is just perpetuating the lie by taking all those fake dives to the bottom of the ocean. And he does it without uh, even a breathing apparatus. Did he? That big so did he? Ass. Did he work on the moon landing fake? No, then? that was Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick did. But no, it's I, well I mean, known. It, it, it would for it all make the a lot listeners. Of sense. It's well known in the industry by <laughs> all of us professionals. Well, I'm uh, just wondering Stanley if he got Kubrick his start on that did. project. Oh, he. I think he was uh, Stanley Kubrick's intern. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he got started. James on Cameron that. was. Yeah. Yeah. He he held, he got him coffee and stuff. <laughs> So that's how he learned how to fake. Because Stan- Stanley things. Kubrick did Piranhas 1, and then James Cameron did Piranhas 2. <laughs> yeah. Stanley oh, right. Kubrick ghost directed because uh, Joe Dante, and then gave Joe Dante the uh, credit. There you go. That's, just get, <laughs> that's how we roll. That's that's true history. That's, that's, that's the true, true history. <laughs> the true, the true history of the United States by the, by the Film Project podcast. Yes. <laughs> uh, so and we, JFK was only ever a hologram. <laughs> he, yeah, and he came back as Tupac, the real Tupac Shakur. Yeah, the yeah. Re- yeah, yeah. So we've got some really awesome uh, looking films, and I, I pulled up a, a list after you mentioned to do so before the podcast. Two thousand summer two thousand fifteen films. Yeah, and uh, the, the first one that immediately popped up uh, is May eighth. We've got Maggie coming out, which looks it's the it's the Arnold Schwarzenegger indie film about. Mm-hmm. Him trying to protect his zombie, zombie daughter. daughter. And I, this opened at, <laughs> did it open at like Tribeca Film Festival? And it got amazing reviews. Yeah. I think it's Tribeca. I think it looks interesting. And it, it does. It's, it's an odd <laughs> pairing. It's an odd yeah. pairing. Yeah. It's an odd deal, but the thing, why do you guys think it is that anytime Schwarzenegger does a, tries to do a drama, he fails? Well, when has the he accent? tried? When has he really tried? Uh, I mean, well, okay, so it'll be action drama, but I know going way back, End of Days was supposed to be uh, no, that was driving still... this Terminator. No, 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 no. It was still it yeah. was still supposed to be uh, an action film, but but you know he was playing End of Days, like an directed alcoholic. Directed by uh, um, John Hyam's dad, Peter Hyams. That's right. What, yeah, yeah. No, End of Days. End of oh, Days. End of Days. Directed yeah. by Peter Hyams. Do you yeah. guys? I guess my theory is, I think as hard as he tries, I don't know if Arnold Schwarzenegger 
has ever been that good of an actor. I mean, that might be obvious, but I think he's had I, moments. I don't know. Conan the Barbarian. I mean, that was a oh, role no. Rewatch fit for him. They they don't they don't hold up. There's movies that I are better know. fits for him. The Long Goodbye. He was great as Bodyguard Number Two. <laughs> Long, yeah. And no, seriously, watch seriously, him. Yeah. He he looks directly at the camera many <laughs> oh, times, God. and he says a line, and then yeah. looks right at the camera like. Did I do good? <laughs> Did I just break the fourth wall? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not picking on him, but I think I think the only like film I've ever really liked him in, like aside from Terminator movies, like Kindergarten True, Cop? True Lies. I mean, can, it, can, no, he's great in comedies. Mm-hmm. He's great in comedies yes. and action. Um, and action comedy. Twins. Yeah. Twins is fun. Yeah. I've never seen it. No. Never, really? Never seen it. Yeah. Him and Devito. No. Oh, it's fantastic. Kindergarten yeah. Cop. Kindergarten Cop. I saw fun. Kindergarten yeah. Cop, but to me, those films, it's always just. Him just getting set up for one-liners. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh no. But no anyway, so Mag- I mean, Maggie looks really interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if that's a wide release. Maybe not. Uh, not sure. probably not. Yeah. Well, we've uh, we've mentioned it a couple times. Uh, May fifteenth, Mad Max, uh, Fury Road. Mad yeah, Max. I'm really excited about that. It better be good. Because yeah. everyone thinks it, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it does nothing at the box office because the last like. Ten times a film that has been every been everyone's been super hyped to go see. They don't go see. They it. don't go see it, mm-hmm. and then they wonder why. Well, I mean, a lot of those are not like this is already a franchise, but a lot of the films that people are excited to see, they just don't go and support. Right, and then they complain about the business not making movies that they want to see. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, this is kind of the same thing, but this is a franchise still. I mean. Uh, I I hope for the best with that one because it looks awesome. Mm-hmm. I I haven't watched any of the Mad Max films probably in about ten years. Uh, have any of you guys watched them somewhat recently? Oh or? geez, um, I I I started to watch one, uh, the the original Mad Max, um, just a, a little while ago, but. Uh, I, I had to go and do something else, and I just never came back. You just put it on, and you just you just walk away. <laughs> yeah, Dude. pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the original Mad Max is completely different. Mm-hmm. It is not Warrior. even yeah. remote. Yeah. No, uh, isn't it Ro- Mad- doesn't it go Road Warrior then Mad Max? No, it's just Mad Max, and then, and the, then, then well, it's Mad Road Max Warrior. Road Warrior. I believe is the full title. But no, the second one no, is the Road Warrior. The Road Warrior is the but that's, second one. Okay, oh, okay. I always get and then confused. there is uh, Beyond Thunderdome. Beyond Thunderdome. Mm-hmm. There's it's Mad Max, then Mad Max uh, the Ro- or Road Warrior, and then Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Yeah. But uh, and then Fury Road. Yeah. Mad Max Fury Road. So one film that absolutely no one should miss this summer is Absolution. Stars Steven Seagal and oh. Vinnie Jones. Oh boy! <laughs> oh boy! Who's Vinnie Jones? Vinnie Jones, uh, from like uh, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. He, oh, okay. uh, he's a former uh, professional football player. Yeah, yeah not yeah. not football, yeah. American football, but uh, European football. Um, but, not not footy, as they call it over <laughs> across the pond. Yeah. But in all seriousness, an interesting uh, on May twenty second, three films completely unlike one another: Poltergeist, Tomorrowland, and Aloft. Tomorrowland. So I don't know what a loft is, but Tomorrowland, they they finally put out a trailer that actually shows a little bit more than just a tease. And I've I've I like Brad Bird. I love Iron Giants, one of my favorite movies of all times. Uh, I really liked his Mission Impossible film a lot, but uh, I I never liked The Incredibles. I just, I I didn't oh, like man. it. Oh man, you were completely <laughs> the opposite <laughs> of what I. But I think. I think what's interesting is although I haven't seen Iron Giant. Yeah, with. Tomorrowland, I I like this idea that Disney can take just a ride and make movies out. I, I, I simultaneously hate the idea and like the idea. Who cares if they can make an entertaining movie out of it? Right. You know? yeah, I, if and I agree. If it's Battleship and then it's a terrible movie, well, it makes sense. Cause I, I'm surprised when they can do that and still make something that's worth watching. But yeah. they made it out of... Haunted House. I mean, come on. The, with with the Eddie Murphy. Wasn't tower, but, tower that, but, why, but why is that a weird one? Haunted House is a very... Like, it should have been good. Well, it's a, it's a staple <laughs> film. Yeah. It, you, all you need is the name. Haunted yeah. House, and you can make anything out of it. Yeah. yeah. It's harder when you've got Battleship. The first, pir- <laughs> the first Pirates <laughs> movie, I, I think most people would agree, is genuinely a really good movie like which I think one the first pirates of the caribbean movie. i think i, I thought it was fantastic fan, I, I thought yeah. it was great yeah. too like i yeah. i really really like it. I, they just 
drug it out and beat it a billion times with yeah. what we're coming on number five now. So yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's yeah. only at five. But, but the <laughs> trailer been a fan of those. Yeah, <laughs> the trailer for Tomorrowland looks kind of. It looks like I don't quite know if it look. It's just a bunch of noise, or if they just haven't shown us what the real story. I feel like the they haven't about. shown us what the real story is, and I, I don't know how everyone else feels, but I'm so mixed on George Clooney that why. I feel like there's some performances where I'm like, oh, wow, that was... Is it know. like the Ben Affleck when, syndrome? It, it's like <laughs> when, what performances? Because there was a change when he did... It there was, was a change, yes. Oh, Brother, Where Art Thou? And everything after it. Yeah. And then before that, he got rid of his head wobble that he used to yeah. have. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, he started taking himself seriously. And you Same have, with Ben Affleck. And you have to disregard, obviously, Batman and Robin when you think of George Clooney. Well, yeah. he even says it's... A no, close. no, and I don't... And I'm not counting Batman. Yeah. Batman and Robin never actually happened. It's I really just a dream we all collectively as, had. As, so. uh, Joel Schumacher yeah. being yeah. the problem there. Yeah. No, yeah. and I, I don't know. Maybe I. Maybe it's his uh, his funny when he's got to do something more goofy. I feel like Tomorrowland looks like a good film, but I don't. I don't see George Clooney as more of a goofy character. I like him more in his serious roles because he can deliver his performances. So better. you want George yeah. Clooney from Syriana? In, in every in tomorrow tomorrow land. Land. <laughs> it doesn't have to be that yeah. serious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And actually, his goofiness in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou is where I started. I mean, like, there him, is so a, I agree with there's that. a line, and you're right up to it with Oh Brother, Where Art Thou. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. A water line. Yeah. So we. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. It's unfair to really say this before we see Tomorrowland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I like Brad Bird. I, I everything. I mean, he even going back to stuff he did on The Simpsons. Uh, you know, he's I think he's I think he's a really talented person, but why does someone like Brad Bird, who could do anything, why does he make a, a Disney movie called Tomorrowland? I guess that's always kind of the question. I guess obviously it's a paycheck and obviously he, hopefully you'd want to believe that he found something great in this. So but, I think I, I think he's I think he's trying to show that he can direct live action because there was rumor that Brad Bird was going to take on a Star Wars film. Back when they mm -hmm. announced all the Star Wars films, yeah. his name was on the short list. Yeah. And then we got Mission Impossible 5, which I loved. Four. I thought, I, or four, yeah. excuse me. And I thought it was fantastic. I thought that really brought the franchise back and made yeah. it a good film. And then, you know, he, he got Tomorrowland, and, th and that brings him into Disney. So I think that they're trying to set prove, him up. For yeah. I, I think, you know, you, you start working with a filmmaker like that. But episode eight is going to be directed by Ryan Johnson. Who really hasn't ever done a huge film? Now Looper was a bigger film. Yeah, but but there was I know what a, you're saying, but but it is. I don't think he has anything to prove. There was a anything. Star Wars. And now they're calling them anthology films, which I think is horrible. But there was an anthology film that they said was being directed, but I can't remember. Jo who, Josh Tracker. Is it? Yeah, Trank, Trank, Josh Trank. That's Josh where, Trank. Yeah. What did he do? Josh he Trank? did. He did. Uh, what's oh, it called? Chronicle. Chronicle. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. And he did the new Fantastic Four movie. Yeah. Which there's a. Well, There's a bunch of weird rumors about what so happened there. So they just dropped him off of the new Star Wars. Why? Yeah. I don't know. They, they just said that Josh Trank is out now. He they was, usually don't that say happened why. Friday. He was developing <laughs> yeah. a, an un, an untitled anthology film. These are the side films. And he's not doing it's, the Rogue One, It's right? not Rogue One. Okay. That's, that's a different director. That's uh, Gareth, Gareth Edwards. Edwards. Okay. The rumor is that... Uh, he was so difficult to work with during the production of Fantastic Four that the studio had to take the film away from him and reshoot much of that film. Ouch. And then he was just very difficult to work with in the, yeah. the process of, of Star Wars. And I read an article that was in defense of him, and they it basically was slanted towards this guy did Chronicle. Um, he's, he's kind of a, a, a genius in person, but he's not an easy person to work with. Yeah. So I think when uh, when Fantastic Four comes out, I mean maybe it's maybe it's great. I think I think the trailers make it look very interesting. It doesn't look like any superhero movie we've we've seen. I mean, I in in some aspects it doesn't it doesn't yeah. look like it. But if that movie comes out and it's good, because I I really do like Chronicle. Uh, you know, maybe maybe he is this kind of weird genius. I don't know. I, I think, you know, going back to Brad Bird, I, I think that uh, if he can prove himself with Tomorrowland, and honestly, even if Tomorrowland doesn't work out, I think it's going to be because of the script, to be yeah. honest, because visually, I feel like Brad Bird knows what he's doing. So you're going to get, obviously, great visuals, but still the, the script. I, but it, I think when it translates, though, to what I 
what I've liked about Brad Bird when he does animation, I don't feel like we get that Brad Bird when it's when it's film, when it's film, yeah. or when it's live action. I like Brad Bird, but the things that I that are great about him, um, I feel are missing in some of that. Where and you that's get... true. And I, you know, what I was thinking is, if they would hand him a Marvel film, I think we'd get another James Gunn esque. You know, give him it's, something that's really goofy, still in the superhero world, and give him a little bit more flexibility on creativity. It's a little tough, though, because if you notice, every all the Marvel films are feeling alike. Yeah, they're... They, you know, there might be some little differences, but I think they're being directed by committee, with oh, yeah. one person listed as the director. I mean, I think yeah. they but get the so thing big, is, it's working, and it's, compare that yeah. to I'm not DC. saying it's not working. No, but I agree. I feel the same way. Um, but but I think Guardians is a good example of them giving you know giving someone chance to to have a film that it still looks the same. There's still some DN the Marvel DNA in it. But I guess that brings us to to Ant Man, which is also another summer release. Well I feel like I feel like the Marvel films are really, really, really expensive T V. Yeah. Because if you look at a TV series, they've got different directors all the time. Yeah. But there's a consistent quality. There's a very to it, consistent yeah. quality and consistent look and the Marvel films don't deviate too much. Yeah, yeah, but I did notice a difference between what the Russo brothers did in, yeah. in uh, Captain America. It's still, action, well, wise, it action wise, action wise, but it's wise. still it was an approach. It was an yeah. approach that allowed him to actually kill people. Yeah, yeah, he did kill people or right. seriously injured them, as yeah. opposed to the more cartoon approach of the first one. Yeah. Um, I think he still killed him, but I mean, he was using a machine gun and stuff. I mean, him, he but... straight up shot him in the chest, right? In some right. of them, I mean, there was a brutality to yeah. how he dealt with them that that they brought. But still, if you're talking about how it's shot, it they they I look don't feel like it was. There's a good that pace different. and lit. It's all yeah. lit, and it all looks good. There's a sol there's a there's a algorithm at works there, or a solution, or a that's working, and they're right. not going to deviate from that. But but then they did with the Daredevil TV show, which is interesting. But I and I, and I think well, that's but what that's different. When you start getting yeah. into actual TV, there there is differences there. Right, right. You know. But but I think that's also Marvel. You know, as as much as they're meant for mainstream audiences, I think Marvel clearly went for the Breaking Bad audience with with Daredevil. Mm -hmm. For you know, for for the lack of a better example, they wanted to come out and say. You know, this isn't just for kids. Kids can watch this, and maybe they, you know, maybe kids under thirteen shouldn't watch this. But they wanted to bring in, you know, a, a, a different market. They wanted mm -hmm. people to to see it. And so, when Daredevil does cross over with Avengers, that brings in the people who normally wouldn't go see Avengers. Yeah, which is no one. Which is no one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but Ant Man. Ant Man's interesting because originally Edgar Wright was on the film. Yeah. And then taken out of it and replaced with Peyton Reed. And I think that's probably a big reason why is yeah. because uh, Edgar Wright wanted to make Edgar Wright's film. Yeah. And um, they said bye bye. They said bye. So mm -hmm. do you think uh, with that departure of Edgar Wright, and I don't know how far into actual filming and 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 well, writing they it happened. Tests. They had. Yeah. Oh yeah. Which, no, I know they had. They tests. never now, now really kind of defined. There's certain yeah. sequences in the trailer yeah. that I saw the test of, and yes. they're still doing similar, the same yeah. thing. Yeah. But my question is, are we, because we all know Edgar Wright's writing and his comedy and how he yeah. does things, do you think we'll be able to watch this film and go, wow. I don't think th so. Th there's a complete like yeah. dichotomy of, oh, that was Edgar Wright, and that's Peyton Reed, and that I, was I'd really like, weird. I'd I like, know. I don't think so, because I'd like to see this. I'd like to know some facts about what happened because you watch a film like Scott Pilgrim, which I think is a film that totally works. I don't know if you. If I you... love Scott Pilgrim, yeah. and that's a film. That's a great example of one that everyone goes. I am so excited and to see that, and then no it. one goes to it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's 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 frustrating. Yeah, but I almost wonder if specifically he wanted to, you know, maybe he was he was trying to make a film where there'd be crazy, you know, titles that come out when it's one, you know, the boom and the crash, that kind of stuff. 
or 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 just any kind of any of the the visual elements of Scott Pilgrim, if he was trying to bring that into Ant Man and Marvel said no, that's not the way we do it. Yeah, that would make sense, and I would have to agree with Marvel. I think you're talking too specific. No, though. no, I, I doubt. Am, I, I doubt am. he was going to no, do something. But I'm that saying, at, but I'm saying the, at a certain point. I, I that's a bad example, but at a certain point there was something he wanted to do with well, this film. Well, I think film. it was directing. Honestly, yeah. I think it was directing. He's used to directing and getting an actual vision yeah. that he has on film. Sure. And there is no, I mean, it's not possible for all of these directors with varying styles yeah. to all look the same without a third, without, well, not really a third party, but without a higher power forming you into what they want. And that's how be. the James Bond films were for years because I kind of still feel like they are to some extent. Well, to now, the there, extent of Casino one Casino second. Royale changed changed it where they are, but But look, now it's in that Casino Royale yeah, mode. But it's the even the Sam Mendes version is not that different from the Casino Royale right. version and Sam Mendes and and uh Mark Webb or Mark Weber or what was his name? The guy Webster, that, the the lovable yeah. child from the nineteen eighties no, um, sitcom. The guy that did the uh, Quantum of Solace. Yeah, I don't they were all in that same in that same Max Webb? No. Um, they're all in that <laughs> If same... only we had some machines that we could look <laughs> this up. Yeah, they're all in that same Man. realm but and in tone, but uh, the same or like Sam Mendes has he he I, I feel like I'm Mark seeing Forrest, a, Mark Forrester. Oh, Mark Forrester. Yeah. I feel like I'm seeing a little bit of him, yeah. but not completely Sam Mendes. No. Yeah. Sam Mendes has made some great films, and I always can see Sam Mendes in those films, and I'm just getting a hint yeah. of it. Yeah, in and the newest one. With, with the latest one, not Spectre that's coming out, but the the last one that just got released. Uh, I feel like there's a huge departure from the original Sam Mendes vision of Bond. And now we're all of a sudden leaning right back into where we left off with Bond. Like it's yeah. unrealistic. I mean, you know, cause yeah. that's what they went for in the first, in the, what was it? Casino Royale. They really went for, okay, let's make this a grittier bond that made a little bit more sense. Well, and we've, we've totally departed from that at this point. But yeah. this Again. becomes a question of, you know, when you have a franchise uh, you know, the audience kind of expects something and, and you should always try to surprise them. You know, if, if, if tomorrow someone came to any of us and said, we're going to give you a Marvel movie, we're going to give you Dr. Strange. Let's say they, they said, you're going to direct Dr. Strange. We already have a script. You can tweak it the way you want. If they came to me and said, you're going to direct Dr. Strange, I'd do whatever they wanted. Because exactly. They yeah. Cause that, yeah. <laughs> what yeah. If, what, you know, if I'm, if I'm a, if you were a Stanley Kubrick or whatever, right. and they came to you and said, we want you to direct Doctor Strange, and this is how we want you to direct it, you'd probably tell them to piss off. Right. You know, Because Stanley Kubrick would do a, could find a way to do an original film that would be everything he wanted to do in Doctor Strange. He could do that in an original film. He already and did. It's called Doctor Strange Love. Doctor Strange Love, yeah. Yeah, yeah. boom, boom. But, oh, Wait, do we good. have a director on Doctor Strange yet? I mm -hmm. think there is. I'm oh, trying to remember. Is. Who is it? It's, I can't uh, remember. Yeah. But I, I think there's, there's only so much you can do within a franchise. And I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's unfair. Maybe it's unfair to put these people in a mold, even if it's San Mendes, who was very successful with uh, Skyfall. Uh, but maybe that's part of the challenge. Maybe part of the challenge is... If I would someone... love to see these. I would love to see these where they hire a director with a very, very unique visual style. Yeah. And let them do their thing with it. Right. Not, not get in there and mess with it. I know Tarantino was trying so hard and vying for the job to direct Casino Royale. Yeah. And they wouldn't let him. Because, because, because would, of many reasons, but yeah. I mean, or, well, I mean, I, only they know the reasons, but yeah. I would have loved, to, I would have rather seen that version than the Casino Royale version we got. Yeah. Um, so Scott Derrickson, Scott Derrickson, who he directed Sinister, which I didn't like necessarily. He, he directed uh, Exorcism of Emily Rose, which was okay. But I listened to him on a Smodcast, it was Smodcast podcast, or the Smoothie Makers. It's mm -hmm. one of Kevin Smith's podcasts. And he is an interesting dude. 
he talked about production of of several of his films and was very brutally honest. He, oh, and he did The Day the Earth Stood Still. And I think we've talked yeah. about this on oh, the podcast yeah. before. He he basically spelled out everything that happened behind the scenes that that made it so he he was given an opportunity to do a remake. He had these ideas and the studio, it's a story we've always we've heard many times. The studio, you know, took control and they didn't want to make the film he wanted to make. So he went back and had a huge success with, with Sinister, which I think was an okay film, kind of in the vein of the 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 conjuring yeah. films. So so he's perfect for Doctor Strange because he'll listen to the studio and yeah. do what they want. But but I think he might bring enough of his DNA to it the same way James See, Gunn did. And maybe. I hope so. I mean that's you know, that's my expectation with JJ Abrams. You know, I, I'm extremely hesitant with you know, I have the best expectations yeah. for Star Wars, knowing that Abrams is behind it. But at the same time, I'm like, how much of this is Kathleen Kennedy? And I want, but I want to see. Kathleen Kennedy has always been yeah. fairly supportive, yeah. but hands off. And I hope so. I know, wanna... Same with, same, seems like with with Frank Marshall too. I mean, it doesn't hurt when you're producing a Spielberg film to let yeah. to just let him do his thing. So who knows? Yeah. But I like the idea of, uh, um. I like the idea of the new Star Wars movie feeling like a Star Wars movie. It really I, does. I yeah. don't want. I don't want it to. And I don't have. I. I never had a problem with the visual style of the new Star Trek movies because it, you know I, I had a problem with the story of the first reboot. Yeah. But Why? I, I, the first reboot. The the the, the, the the of the the first the the nine two thousand nine Star Trek reboot. Really. My problem with the story of that film is. They had to, they had to screw up a perfectly good film to do fan service to the fans uh, of the original series. Th they couldn't just say this is Star <laughs> Trek from the beginning. They had to make it an alternative timeline, and so much hinged on this idea of this alternative timeline and this red glowing orb with like whatever antimatter or whatever it was. So much hinged on that that it took away from a great cast and a great visual style and great effects and and having to put in old Spock. And that was only for a small section of fans that would have complained. Obviously, Star Trek has a huge set. It has a huge fan base, but they needed to. What the fans needed is someone to just say, this is a reboot. This is day one. You this this doesn't inform anything that uh, this isn't informed by anything that came before it. This is this is a reboot. Instead, they had to spend 60 percent of that film apologizing to <laughs> to the to the one or two million fans who would be upset over for that over that. but I'll, I'll say this and i agree that as a star trek fan i was a, i wasn't as upset i accepted the first film i did not accept the second film the, like the second film was fantastic as long as you but it was think the of fan service somebody else and not it was the con. fan service to yeah, to the to the fans where where it be I and I actually I like the second film a lot more. I thought yeah. it was great all around, but the fact that they had to play off I mean, it became a parody of yeah. Wrath of Khan. Yeah, it and really the only did. reason they did that was so they could wink at the audience. Yeah. And that took me out of the movie. The only like there's no reason okay, that's my mom again. No. <laughs> the only reason to do that is because you're gonna have a couple of fans that are either gonna cringe or cheer when when they do that and they but, were telling a good story they could have told that story with Khan and had it play out differently or i mean john harrison they could have kept it as john harrison and i really would have been happy and no one would have cared and nobody would have cared they would have been yeah. like because it wasn't even Khan's story really to begin with right but even with the fan service um you know i've seen the film several times with different parties of people who aren't really Star Trek fans and they like the film. So I kind of I like realized, both of them and I don't I wasn't I was never a fan of Star yeah, Trek. Yeah, and, and I realized that was the audience. It wasn't yeah. us nerds. It was to bring in I, I met some people who are really just into mainstream films who really could like they're more into relationship films and stuff like that. And they watch Star Trek and they're like, oh this is actually really good. And I'm like, as a Star Trek fan, I'm like, oh cringing and nobody else was cringing. They're like, oh, this is a good time. And I'm like, well, okay, see my, this uh, is the audience. Everybody you know, watching this on YouTube family, knows we've been talking to Brandon all the way over yeah. there the whole time. Yeah. But uh, see, my, my family is huge Star Trek fans. Yeah. And they love They these. built an Enterprise bridge in his basement, and he has to poop in the holodeck. 
Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't have to. I just do. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I yeah. loved both of them. I bought them. I thought they were great. So yeah, yeah. They but were... but you know, Star Trek's interesting. In there's obviously a, a tonal look to so much of Star Trek. Yeah. That when J.J. Abrams changed it. I guess you could say quite a bit. I don't know if the, there wasn't a tonal look, and that was the problem. Is it was this hap, it was this haphazard no, it, look it that, looked, was, that was yeah. that was very low budget from the TV show of well, the first one was nostalgic, yeah, but then there was the the next generation, which yeah. was just if you look at it, it's laughable. Like what they're wearing is laughably stupid. And what in the whole style? You, sh of you shut up right now, McKee. Especially it's the just, first season, but then they realized that terrible. Lieutenant Commander Jordi yeah. LaForge would have you sent yeah. to the brig for that. <laughs> it's no, I, it's, no, I know it's what you mean. Names and sentences it, like that 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 alienate it, a lot it, of people. When I think Next Generation is, it holds up actually pretty well if you can get past oh, the pajamas. No, if you can get past the pajamas, but they corrected that in later seasons. They, they changed the uniforms yeah. quite a bit. They had to I always liked. Pieces. The one I'd like to go back and rewatch was Deep Space Nine, because that one that you one know, was pretty sweet. It's in my queue on Netflix, and I just can't get really? myself to. Yeah, because uh, so that rough. that kind of in in junior high and yep. and high school that was that was the one I really kind of followed. I did as too. as it got kind of exciting. So that, wait, that's a good question: Babylon Five or Deep Space Nine? I never even did, saw Babylon yeah. Five. Yeah, uh, like all of my friends in high school were Babylon Five fans, and I. What like, high school did you go to? I know, right? No, that's, Brandon, yeah. that says so much about you. Oh and your my friends. gosh! I, All I, my I, friends were Andromeda, uh, <laughs> starring Hercules. Or Farscape. Or, Farscape, yeah. Oh boy. Uh, Anyways, wait, Farscape. I liked Farscape. Oh, Screw you. Yeah. Well, then. so uh, Jurassic World. I mean, we've talked about that in the past. I well, mean, so I, before then, before then, we have Entourage, which that's like been a joke that it would be a movie for the longest time oh, man yeah. so just to preface i was a huge entourage fan yeah I, you know i i watched as it was going i watched up to well into season four and much and like I, turtle back in the day you were the fat one weren't you no I, i've never <laughs> been the fat one but it was uh he, yeah, he was no. the Vinny chase yeah, yeah. <laughs> no i no i just i really liked it because i felt it felt I mean, you were watching them come from nothing and become this yeah. success. Mm -hmm. But then it got to a point where... How much more success can you have? It was, they were whining about yeah. that, yeah. but they were clearly successful, and it just irritated me so much. For, that, yeah. And it became this kind of, It was almost that they became... I think that the trailer for the film... They weren't just friends. They were like frat house douchebags yeah. At, yeah. at a certain point and yeah. i just didn't like the people i question whether the trailer for the film the the opening of the trailer i mean to break the trailer down itself into into sections the opening of the trailer looks better than the actual like where they talk about the real film i or think it's, it's that like uh i think club the, with the getting ready for yeah i think to be Medellin. fair the trailer yeah. looks like like uh like a reboot of the series i i think it's everything oh it's it's san andreas starring the rock oh boy. <laughs> everything's crashing no it uh i think it actually looks like back to the fun of you know they're in hollywood trying to make a movie and that's what i liked about the first couple of seasons i binged them all when i when they were coming out on on dvd i've never finished the last season but I was able to kind of binge them what, all. How many seasons are there? Seven or eight. I think oh, it was eight okay. seasons. So I think I've I think I have one season left. But I think it's one of those shows that, uh, it doesn't. If you're watching week to week, when the anticipation for the next episode comes up, and it's and it's just a bunch of guys sitting in a no, room no, talking. No, I was well, I was binging. You were binging. Okay. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Here. I had the Netflix yeah. DVD but it, thing. It felt like I liked, you know you know we all work in 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 the film business so you there was this fun of watching the behind the scenes and and for people who work in it you can you can relate to it and people who don't it was a fun fantasy yeah and when it just well, it was became a little bit of both for me because yeah. it was a fun fantasy but i also kind of knew a little bit of what they were talking about but when it's them just sitting in a room talking about Turtle's car wash or something that he was like building <laughs> or like a limousine service, whatever it well, was. It was, the, it was just the, it was a bunch of spoiled rich kids at that point. Yeah. There was, they, they were so far removed from the dynamic that where they started. And I, yeah. I, I, I think, I think I'm on the same. This is about the time that, uh, uh, what's her name? The porn star. 
became the girlfriend. Sa- Sasha Gray. Yeah, Sasha Gray oh, came see, in. Oh, see, I've seen that. Okay. I wasn't to there. Oh, you about, didn't? Oh, yeah. I was right in the beginning of season four when I think he gets offered something, a uh, part from Scorsese. Yeah. Mm. Oh, uh, 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 Great Gatsby or something, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it something Gatsby? like that. Or he uh, does Great Gatsby at, at one point in the series. Uh, Anyways, I, I don't know. I actually think the movie seems like a, re- like a return to form w- in the sense that it seems like it's all about them trying to make a movie, and that seems fun to me. I'll give it a chance. I'll watch it because I think at the end of the day, the characters are the characters were always interesting, and that's what made you come back to them. But the scripts were 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 failing. Yeah. So um, then uh, Spy is a. a we're not going through the whole list. We should just start oh, picking out. Oh, some I, know, of the top I know. Ones. I know. Oh, uh, opening in the same weekend. I like this. Uh, on June twenty sixth. Oh, uh, before I say that, Dope on June 19th. That oh. looks like a really interesting film. Never heard of it. Never heard uh, of it. Dope, it's about um, some... Uh, Starring uh, Zoe Kravitz and Forrest Whitaker as the guy with his eye that's kind of twinged out. Some uh, some like uh, yeah. like down and out uh, kids in the hood. They're, uh, they have an opportunity that's to racist. go... <laughs> they, they have an opportunity to... Uh, this one guy, he's just an absolute genius and he's a chance to get into... Uh, college, but um, let's spend twenty minutes is it talking about Finding dope. Forrester. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. No. Sorry. We won't interrupt you anymore. Why are you looking at me? I was, he's he started it. Because <laughs> you're an enabler, Jason. Yeah. You're an enabler. Yeah. No, it's um uh, the plot summary is a critical hit and audience favorite out of the Sundance Film Festival. That's the, that's the plot. <laughs> in in dope, Malcolm uh, is carefully surviving life in a tough neighborhood in Los Angeles while juggling college applications, academic interviews, and the SAT. A chance invitation to an underground party leads him to an adventure that could allow him to go from being a geek to being dope to ultimately being himself. So it's just oh, like boy. step up to the streets? Uh, it, but it looks like it has more no, heart step and soul. Up for the more, heart, more heart and soul, yeah. literally. <laughs> wow, yeah. you're just well, taking good. it all into like... It doesn't sound interesting at all to me. It probably won't even open Spokane. Yeah, but, um, but why, what 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 fo- draw, what of all the films Sean that are doesn't opening, like it because it's racially charged. <laughs> racially charged. Uh, what what makes that the the standout for you? I'm um, curious. Well, for for that weekend and um over. Uh, I don't care nights. about the weekend. What and, what made you go to dope out of an entire roster of films for the summer? You went well, to like no no no. I, I was gonna say Ted Two and The Little Death are both on the same. What is weekend. The Little Death? The Little La Death. La Petite La Petite Morte. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, uh, the, the poster is what I saw here and it's, don't uh, show Jason the poster. It's not <laughs> it's, a fan. It's, a, it's the finger and the finger. Oh yeah. Oh. Um, and, uh, it's, uh, it's, a for like, everybody who's watching now, you can see the finger, the finger, yeah. you make a hole with one finger and you make Speaking a, and of a that, pointer have you that. seen the trailer for love by Gaspar Noah? No, no, no way or whatever. Look it up. Okay. We'll have to. Um, but Ted two and, uh, the little death are both on the same weekend. And I thought that was funny. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, oh, but Samuel L. Jackson's Big Game opens yeah. that weekend as well. So You're if you want to see Samuel L. Jackson, films. yeah, no one's <laughs> ever heard of these. But <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson as the president of the United States. Okay. <laughs> Directed so, by Chris. So Rock. Ted two, <laughs> Ted one. Uh, it was funny when you watch it, but I, I, uh, people loved it though. People, mm-hmm. No, no, I. It's it's fine. I don't have anything against it, but I just remember watching that film and knowing that within three weeks. Every joke in that film was going to be dated. That's yeah. everything. Uh, from Seth, him. Seth, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. I to think, some extent, I yeah. guess it's better than the Farrelly Brothers when uh, the Three Stooges. Where yeah, it yeah. was. Li- it was literally that. Yeah. So July first, the opening weekend for Terminator G- Genesis, Genesis, or how are we pronouncing it now? Gynesis. Um, but Gynesis. I, Gynesis. I, I'm. I'm I'm wondering which is going to be the bigger open, Terminator Genesis or Magic Mike. Double XL. Well, and that's a, that's actually a good that, that because I think Terminator uh, gynecologist <laughs> could actually could actually be one of the big bombs of the summer. I, I think mm-hmm. it could yeah. be, especially. I mean, Magic Mike is going to do good. Oh, of yeah. course, yeah, it's got a so huge. They're putting huge it following. up with term. I mean, well, you've got now you're splitting you're splitting it up. The guys will probably go to Magic Mike. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the guys and the know. ladies are going to be all about that Terminator. Yeah, let's have a podcast. Let's do a live stream of the podcast at Magic Mike. <laughs> yeah. well, I've never the, seen the first one. It's okay. I, I mean, it. I saw it. It's it's okay. Sean went for the dancing. I went. I went for the dancing. He went for stayed, the story. Stayed for the romance. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, then the next weekend we've got uh, Selfless and Minions. 
Uh, I mean, I don't know anything. I never saw the Despicable is, Me oh, movies. They're not funny. Yeah. I mean, I, a yeah. lot of people, obviously Dis- people think they're funny, Despicable but it's like a Me bunch too. of... It's, a, it's like a bunch of walk into pl- panes of glass type humor. Right. You know, or... <laughs> yeah, see? You'd love it then. Yeah. Or step on a rake. And yeah. It's what happens? The, oh, you get smacked in the forehead four <laughs> times because oh. you keep doing it. Nice. And uh, that that same weekend is the Gallows, which I when, just uh, love hearing all these random films. <laughs> which, I have, the, no, I have no, this so, list of Poltergeist I, and Ant Man. Not and, looking forward to Poltergeist. The um, the they had a for Poltergeist they had a what French trailer was the first one to come out. Mm. It looked amazing, Be, and everything was was dubbed in in Portuguese or whatever it was because <laughs> well, that's what they speak in, in France. <laughs> okay. And. Uh, it looked really cool, and then you look at the new trailer, and it just looks like a bad, like the. It looks, it looks like, like a, a bad remake, and the only mm-hmm. thing they changed out was it was a flat screen TV now. Yeah. Instead yeah. of a CRT TV. There's two T's in that. CRT T. When you you saw Unfriended, right? Oh yeah, we were gonna talk about some films. So earlier. yeah. Well, no, no, no. You but guys you, you, about you did you did go Jason see it, right? Uh, I did go see it. Yeah, and I the Gallows s- had a. Um, a trailer before Unfriended. What was the gala? I'm trying to remember what it um, was. It's a girl, it's like a, a all red filter, so it's basically red and black, and she's sitting there crouched at the closest end of a hallway, and so you know something bad is going to happen from the back of the hallway, and I don't know what happened from the back of the hallway because I actually closed my eyes for that Oh, one. yeah? I don't think I saw the trailer when I saw Unfriended. They might have switched up the trailers. Yeah, it, it just it, it had this like immediate tone that I was like, I don't want to be yeah. frightened by whatever this is that's about to frighten yeah. me. I'm I'm curious. Maybe we'll wait to to see if Juan or Jason goes to see Unfriended because mm-hmm. I think it I think it's definitely a film we should talk about because I do too. because of how successful they pull off the concept because mm-hmm. it's a concept that that really shouldn't work. Mm-hmm. And someone told me the other day. Uh, that there was a film, there's a film on Netflix that did the same thing where the whole thing takes place on a uh, laptop screen. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I don't know if uh, there was there. Modern Family did did a, a an episode of it, but but Unfriended is a horror film that the entire thing it never really pulls away from the laptop screen. It's mm-hmm. not like she picks up her phone or she drinks her drink. It's just everything is from a laptop screen. Mm-hmm. So you're seeing her turn up her music you're seeing her just check messages you're seeing her just open and close programs just stuff you do if you're just hanging out talking to your friends mm-hmm. or stuff that we do while we're recording the podcast but uh we should wait for juan to talk about that because I'm, yeah. I'm curious what everybody's perspective is on that yeah but poltergeist just yeah it doesn't look it doesn't look good at all i'm mm-hmm. not i'm really just not interested i i honestly like i'm not even interested enough to really go see it mm-hmm. to be honest well, I'm I'm curious by Brandon and Jason have just have like left the room and now we're just like hanging out. Yeah, we're we're just gonna talk. How about have you that. been, Tom? I've I've been all right. You know, uh, I've been really excited with uh, getting going on Z two. So Z two Judgment Day. Z S O two. Z S O two. Yeah, that's cool. Um, that sounds no, French. Uh, selfless. Selfless looks really interesting. You're picking the most random films. <laughs> what is that? It's um Ryan Reynolds and Ben Kingsley, okay. and it's where um. Uh, people of extreme wealth have the ability to uh, be like their consciousness transferred into the body of a younger person. I did see a trailer for this. It's a Tarzium movie. Okay. The director of yeah. the, the fall scene. and the cell. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, it, it looks intriguing, uh, an interesting concept. And uh, yeah, I just, when I saw that trailer, I was like, Ooh, that's, that's Ryan Reynolds that's, that's and Ben Kingsley, two of the sexiest men in my book. Yeah, something like that. Welcome back, Jason. We're yeah. just talking about Ben Kingsley. <laughs> uh, yeah, who directed that? That's that, uh, that Tarzim. Film. Tarzim. Oh, Tarsim Singh. Tarsim, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know about that. Mm-hmm. I guess we'll see. Yeah. I mean, I it looked intriguing. He made the Cell, which I liked quite a bit, yeah. and then uh, he made the Fall, which. I wasn't a huge fan of, but, right, but visually, it's, it's visually everything about it is the mm-hmm. is like the best. Every yeah. frame is like the best thing you've ever seen. Yeah. But I never saw Immortals. Did anybody see? Oh that? man, I ha- I couldn't get through it. Oh really? No. Yeah, it's it's really bad. Oh, is that like a Mickey um, Rourke as a? It was the, like the, it the came, gods. It came and, out yeah. after uh, three hundred. Well, I don't w- think it was well trying to rip it off. Yeah. Oh, was, well, was it? Was it? It was sequel? Clear, it no. was trying to rip oh. it off. Okay. I mean, the look is the same look, mm-hmm. but it's... It's more blue. 
than red. Yeah. Baloo from the Baloo. Jungle Book. Ah, they they are making a Jungle Book. Maybe I, know, I don't know John if that's coming out this summer. A I'm live cur- action. Crouching Tiger, yeah, Hidden Dragon so. Two's coming out. Really? Direct to Netflix. Oh. <laughs> um. So Ant Man is on July seventeenth. Yeah. I'm way ahead. Of you. I'm already at August twenty first. Well, right. what are we? You're, you're going to go over uh, pixels. You're, you're not. Oh, gonna pixels. Talk about that? Yeah, pixels. Uh, no, no thanks. <laughs> and Mission Impossible: Rogue Nation. It's all I, right. I, I've, I've liked. Aside from Mission Impossible two, I've liked all the Mission Impossible movies. Three and four being my favorites. Three is easily my favorite. And yeah. Two mm-hmm. easily least favorite. Yeah, I tried. I actually went back on Netflix and tried to rewatch that. It really is just a waste of film. Like it's it's not, <laughs> you know. I you mean, mean I, I mean, I, <laughs> John, two, John Woo. Yeah. yeah, it was the no, but to be specific, it was the John Woo film where someone walked into frame and a bunch of doves flew off to the side. So just every just John to be, Woo. Well, just to be specific, Face Off is that film too. Mm-hmm. Look, I I like Face? John. Yeah. Oh. So I just started watching Face Off again, and I remember I'm really sorry. liking it. No, it's a fun film. Yeah, but it, man, is. It, is it, it, car- is. it is cartoony. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So cartoony. Yeah. Um, well, it's it's almost like Vinnie Barbarino comes back. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. Just the, the cartoony know. nature. How of, do you know who uh, yeah. Vinnie Barbarino <laughs> is? Like, once again, Tom Deneen proves that he's 52 years old. <laughs> Yeah. Come on, Greece. It's it's a classic staple. Uh, I, I'm uh, not a. I wasn't a girl in the 80s. <laughs> oh, I wasn't a girl in the yes, 80s. Yes, you were. Yes, you I, w- were. I wish so. I was. I want. You know, I, I then you could have wore slap bands and uh, slap bands. Neon slap uh, bands came back in the 90s, briefly. not the 80s. No, the the, they 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 were in the 80s, and then they came back in the 90s. They, they like uh, every every ten years yeah, they, yeah. they come back. Well, then we're we're ready for some more. <laughs> we are. I'm telling I'm, you, I'm investing got, in slap bands. <laughs> you still got to look up the poser, the poster for Love by Gaspar No. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. So on the air, you got to look it up. So pixels, I actually think is a really a really interesting idea. Of course, I don't know. It, it has to be based off of the uh, the guy who did the uh, the short the, the success. Of... And that's what's his name. That's uh the the guy who did the short of all the the space invaders coming down and destroying the city. Hmm. Okay, so anyway, so that's what the film looks like. It's obviously based off of. I think it's an interesting idea, but it's an Adam Sandler film, and I don't know like what like I wish I wish Adam Sandler had better people around him because he's well, that's had Chris some Columbus. funny. Films. That's Chris Columbus. Did he direct it? Chris Columbus is yeah. directing Pixels. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> weird. I don't know. You see what I'm talking about? What is I it? do. Hold on. The uh, um the So you found the 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 G rated and then the R rated version. Yeah, yeah. The past R. Uh, what's the G rated version? Uh that's the G rated. Oh the two tongues? No, three. Three tongues. Oh, where's the third one? Hold on. It's a it's a person in the back. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, that's how I normally kiss. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. And then there's this series. One. And there's what is that? Is that a strawberry and a nipple? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a strawberry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think that's the title. Is it, I think that's, that's the title right that's, there. That's not a strawberry. Uh, wow. That's oh. cool. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Uh, pixels. <laughs> yeah, Pixels. So That's from the director of Enter the Void, by the way, and oh, uh, Irreversible. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Which we saw, we did mm-hmm. a review of Irreversible. Yeah. Wait, so, Irreversible yeah. was the ten minute long, rape, twelve eight rape. minute long rape scene. Yeah, 12, yeah. Guys. yeah. <laughs> I timed it out. <laughs> but uh, Enter the Void, wow, that was the guy. I mean, Irreversible was wow, but yeah. I love the director, but that and I really like his movies, but that doesn't mean I have an easy time watching his movies. Right. Um, I just yeah, I find him intriguing as a filmmaker. Gaspar No or No Way, I don't know how you pronounce his name. I think. he's French. Yeah. So, so, they, so, so he, he speaks, speaks Portuguese. Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else is coming out? A little looks... film called Star War. Star War. The Star War? Yeah. I thought it well, was Star's think... War. Then we're Stars getting War. into the then we're getting into September. We're getting towards the end of the year, but uh I I don't know. I think there's there's going to be a lot of films for us to review on upcoming episodes well, of the well, Project Podcast. Ex-Machina, Fantastic Four we talked first about. First great film of the year, Ex Machina. Sean yeah. the Sheep, the movie. Oh, that's a <laughs> that's a book and cartoon series. What? Sean the Sheep. Sounds mm-hmm. awesome. I've I've only heard good things. I've never watched it. Oh, Uncle. 
Uncle comes the out. Man from, the man from Uncle. Uh, yeah. That, yeah. That, the trailer for that looks pretty good, actually. Yeah, we'll I thought that looks pretty good. I'm sure. Guy, Guy Ritchie. Okay. I've, sure. I've always mm -hmm. enjoyed Guy Ritchie. Film. Agent. Always swept away. Mm, I never saw film. it, actually. I actually never saw it. That's a film. I mean, try. You won't really? be able to get. Nah. <laughs> yeah. It's so pretentious. Uh, and he, I saw him on an, or I saw him on Jay Leno, you know, the Tonight Show, uh, and he was, and you could tell he was squirmishly embarrassed to even be really? doing the, the, yeah. How does he? Circuit. Why did he even date Madonna? Why? What do you mean? Why did he date Madonna? <laughs> I don't why know. He... I want to find out. Let's call. Well, him. Let's was, give him a wasn't call. he a, a music video? He was video? married to her, so yeah. obviously there was some. Was of, wasn't he doing? Know. Wasn't he like he blew up as a music video director and then? I, think, I I know his well, first film was the or the Long the, Stock his, and Two Smoking Barrels. I don't know that was if a he big was one. a music video. I don't director think he. I, I, if that. he was, I don't know okay. if he did. All right, but then the the weekend after the Man from Uncle, then we have Agent Forty Seven, the What's sequel that? to Hitman. It's a re. It's a uh, reboot of Hitman. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay, we're we're done with we're done with those. It's a, you <laughs> literally did pick out the least interesting films <laughs> the, of the year. The I, it was supposed to be the most interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, August, or September, we have the transporter refueled. Oh my God! You just keep going <laughs> with these. Yeah. So I, you know, when Juan is back, well, we should have a little more in-depth conversation about this. But we should end with a couple of words about the fifty-hour slam, which, by the time you're hearing this, happened about two weeks ago. Uh, but we're recording it literally the day after, and we have two of the the organizers in the room. Uh, what did what did what's the what's the summary of the night? How did you guys feel it went? Um, I think the the event went fantastically. I mean, uh, um, for the for the most part, the previous years I've just been very involved in all the the technical details of pulling it off. So this was the first time that I actually kind of goofed off because I'd been so busy with um uh, work that uh, Brandon really stepped up and did a, a lot of preparing the, the actual screening to take place. He really brought in his A game. That's he right. did. It was, it was A plus game. B plus, but you know, not A plus like, game. Yeah. A plus game. Yeah. 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 So yeah. what about you? What was, what was, how was the experience for you, Brandon? Uh, this year was great. Um, we had a lot of great films. I, I think it was tough on the judges, uh, just being able to score all of these films. I would say all of them were very close in their scores. So we ended up with a great list of films this year. Um, and uh, the turnout was fantastic. Uh, I, I felt like the show from beginning to end with the uh, Pine League opening up was fantastic. Uh, you know, even we got to be there for the sound check and I was like, wow, these guys are really going to rock the house. And they did. They really brought it uh, to the show. And the, the poetry slam, I love that we've been doing that every year with this poetry slam. Uh, you know, bringing in local poets um, and, and kind of having that that poetry competition was fantastic. I, it really went well, and I think the audience really responds well to it. Uh, and then the uh, the screenings, of course, you know, everybody comes for the screenings, and uh, it was it was really really well done. Uh, so we had a really good time, great turnout. So yeah, and, and as audience member, you know, Sean, you were there as an audience member. How did you you know from your perspective, w what did you think? Uh, because of some some like stuff I had going on, I didn't make it until right until the screening. Oh, okay. So, am I wrong that last year you had you opened with music and the also ended with music? Yeah, mm -hmm. we had okay. a couple bands last time, sure. and, and we decided to just go with one band this right. year and, and give them a little bit longer show time, which uh, yeah. I, I think it just it, it helped even out the you know the entire time. Um, yeah. Yeah. One one thing I always enjoyed about last year, because I kind of feel like I missed a lot this year, having missed the music and the and the poetry. I came in at the very end of the poetry, and uh, Devin, uh, I I'm forgetting her last name, but she won she won the poetry slam. Spoiler. She no, was kidding. yeah. <laughs> she was amazing. Yeah. Um. The previous year, what I liked about it is the second you walked into the room, there was local photos to yeah. to to look at. And there was like a little contest there from some SCC students, I believe. Yeah. There was music playing. Uh, then you, there was a poetry slam. And then there was the films. Then it kind of closed with the music. And I think even maybe the year prior to that, there was the whole rooftop party. And there was a really cool atmosphere. So I feel like I missed out on that this year. I Just because I didn't experience it. Uh, but it felt like it felt like the most engaged crowd yet. Yes. which was which was really cool and and a lot of that hap probably just um 
you know, involved, you know, just more people bringing their friends and to support each other. And, uh, I know because of the, the Pacquiao and Mayweather fight, I'm sure attendance would have been a lot more because I think literally I've heard 60 to 90 million homes ordered that. So when you figure like, you know, a third or a, or a fifth of the country is watching that, how many of their friends, you know, did that. And we know several people who did not come because of the, the, right. the fight. Yep. I, I could only imagine that, you know, maybe the crowd would have at least been, and not that the crowd was bad, but you could have easily had an extra hundred people that would have shown up. Oh, I, I'm sure. I, I, I yeah. think, and that's probably conservative. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious because I think, I think everybody there knew three or four or five people who, who didn't come because of it. Yeah. Um, and also because of Bloomsday weekend, it fell on the same weekend as Bloomsday. So I think there was a lot of people who just couldn't find parking downtown or just didn't want to get into the, you know, the, it the, fell on Bloomsday weekend last year and, and we didn't have a, don't ever with correct that. me. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, we do uh, not. What's yeah. That? Don't let that happen. Don't yet. ever correct me. Again. <laughs> don't ever. No, me. no. I, you were yeah. wrong. Sean. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I think a series of a couple of things, the, the turnout was obviously great and you guys seem to be very happy with it. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, I would, you know, I think I, I personally kind of missed out of the, the overall experience just for, for being late. But um, most of the films were comedy films, which was cool. And that I think that kept the, the audience engaged. Uh, and it was just, you know, again, it was just a lot of fun. And, and I, and, and maybe this will be up for a bigger discussion with Juan, but uh, what I really liked is I didn't recognize a lot of people in the audience. Yeah. And I didn't recognize all like when I did see someone in the films that was an actor that I knew before, it was few and far between. And I love that. There were so many people in there that I had no idea who they were. Yeah. Whereas, you know, to be honest, the last four years, it's the same, it's the same pool of actors. And for the first time it was different actors and different directors. And I know behind the scenes, there was a lot of teams that, that, that split up and formed new teams or, or teams that had always been together, uh, became played different parts on other teams. Uh, nobody from my previous teams, except for one was on my team. And even the one person who did stick around, he, he just did sound. He didn't really want an active kind of creative role. And, and it made the films, uh, very interesting to watch. Uh, there was a huge variety of what was up there. Uh, I've always kind of said this, there's, there's, whenever there's any of these timed film events, there's always the, there's always the, uh, the film where someone has an invisible friend. <laughs> there's always a film where, uh, it's two people in a room talking about some conspiracy. There's always a film where, uh, uh, someone's, well, there, there was one of these films, but there's always a film where someone's like, uh, dies in a car accident or, or, you know, uh, has a loved one who dies from cancer. You know, th there's, there's really these five or six stories that always come in all these film festivals and they weren't really there. And that's what was really refreshing, you know, yeah. uh, there, there wasn't the, and there's always the, the films where there's the secret agents, like, and they're always wearing trench coats and, and fedoras. So it was interesting to see a different pool of films. And that yeah, was, was definitely different formats. And um, you're right. There was a wider variety of films. So we didn't see the same concept used over and over again. Yeah. So uh, there, yeah, there was, was really and good. there was one 48 hour film where one of the props they gave us was a blanket. And I think four of the films did a scene where someone gets kidnapped by throwing a blanket over the person. Wow. And, and you'll, when they, when they give us a, when they give us a prop, you'll see several teams use it in the same way. I didn't really see anybody use no. the the criteria in the same way. I think everybody was very creative with uh, with the criteria this year, so it it was nice. I mean, there was there was definitely an ongoing theme in a lot of them. Uh, even somebody mentioned, I think, on Facebook or Twitter that they you know should have put cake in their title, but right. uh, you know, honestly, beyond that, <laughs> everything was different, and it, and it was really refreshing. So, yeah. and uh, to wrap it up, I'll play the, the Juan Moss role <laughs> here, and I'll say, uh, make sure you go to 50hourslam.com and right. check out the viral vote. Uh, so we will have all of the films posted on the website. Get on there and uh, vote for your favorite film, and they'll win an award. And we'll announce that. Tom, do you remember when? I Well, someone said it was going to be last Monday, but it's going to be this Monday. Oh, no, I mean just the just the winner. Oh, so uh, we announced the winner, I believe, at the uh, at Spit. 
No. no, no, they announced the winner sometime during the summertime. Yeah, it's sometime during the summer, so you, you'll have you plenty have, of time, like a month and a half or two to vote. Yeah, Spiff you'll definitely is like have a enough year time. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spiff, Spiff is way too far away, but uh, you'll definitely have a lot of time. So get your family members, you know, your friends, whomever you can, to get on the website and uh, vote for your favorite film. And and we should also give a shout out the next uh, the next time film competition will be the Clinks Resort Summer Short, and that's going to be June nineteenth through the twenty first. And they actually do a cash prize for that. They do a five hundred dollar prize for for that competition. Uh, it it's it's another great event, and they have a summer screening out on the lake, and they put up a, a big screen, and you watch the films just right out in front of the the lake. And you know, if anybody who missed the fifty hour slam, you know, the Clinks Resort one is the next one coming up. Uh, it's it's fun and it's different and. You know, the one thing that I've heard from different people is, you know, it takes you about an hour to get out there, but I really think it's worth it. I, I It's a fun, cool place that they open up to the filmmakers and let them come in for, for the weekend and film at their resort, which is really cool. It's a really cool laid out place. And there, there may or may not be deals for renting cabins or camping spaces for the weekends. I, I want to say, I think they, they did some sort yeah. of deal in the past. I, I, I don't know if they, they're going to do it this time. We should actually get Joni, Elizabeth and Dusty Clink, who are two of the organizers for that. We should get them in, uh, for that yeah, and, that and talk good. to them because, uh, it's, it's a good opportunity. You know, they, they don't always have as many teams as the 50 hour slam, but you know, it's, it's just as fun and it's, it's something to do, uh, in the summertime. And, and there's, there's a lot of people who, they wait all year to do these film festivals. And I've always said you don't have to wait for a film festival to make your short film. You should just make right. it one weekend. Just 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 do something fun, get together and just prove that you can do it. And if but if you have to have someone set up a festival for you, the the Clinks one is is the one to to go for. Definitely. I always say if you don't have at least a million dollars, don't even try. Because it's not it's not just a million dollars is a million dollars for me is a start. No, I'm talking on a short film. Just don't. Oh, no, that's try. what I mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, but the trick is, is if you can get your fan, your parents to buy you a red, you're a DP. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's that's what you're you do. That's, that's the way it, it just... works. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, everybody. Well, thank you again for another uh, for listening or watching another episode of the Film Project podcast. Of course, you can check out all the stuff that the Spokane Film Project is doing at SpokaneFilmProject.com. We're made possible by irongoatbrewing.com. We, uh, Jason and Tom enjoyed the fine ales. Oh, hold on. That's my mom calling again. Why don't and you just turn it on silent? Mom, shut up. <laughs> and uh, Kaufman and Associates makes this possible. It's kaufmaninc.com. And the Spokane Film Project is made possible uh, by the help of O'Doherty's Irish Pub and Grill. They're in downtown Spokane. So, yeah, we'll catch you next time, guys. See ya. Bye. 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 Now let's talk some crap about some people while we're not recording. <laughs> yeah. Who else do we hate?